Chancellor Conway, with your permission, I declare a 164th commencement convocation open. Chancellor Conway, colleagues, ladies and gentlemen, these are our honorees of the hour. Please join me in saluting them. We celebrate you this morning. Let's pray together. God of our weary years, God of our silent tears, we invoke your presence this morning upon this institution, upon the faculty and the staff, upon the students that are graduating here today, and the students that are yet to graduate. We pray, holy God, that you will strengthen these graduates, purify their intentions, and grant them strength to use the knowledge and skills that they have acquired here Allow them to use it with confidence, but without arrogance, with both serious determination and good humor, with a strong moral demand upon their lives, but without judging others, with both rigorous intellect and loving hearts. For all these graduates, let them lead the way to a better society. Let them use the resources that they have acquired to bless others. We pray, holy God, that they would remember the good times. We pray, Father, that they would remember the times of challenge because times of challenge will come in their future. Teach them how to make it over. Remember the song, God of our weary years, God of our silent tears, who has brought us thus far on the way. By your might, Holy Father, these students in this institution will continue to bring forth love, justice, wisdom, and understanding for all people. May your blessings remain upon each of them, both the students, the faculty, the staff, and the institution, now and forevermore. Amen. Good morning and welcome to the 164th commencement exercise at Elizabeth City State University. This is a celebration of a milestone for these graduates that are about to embark upon their next set of life's journeys. We believe that due to the work of the faculty and the staff that has poured into them over the course of the last few years that they will be well prepared to meet the challenges that will, they will face as they move into the future. I'm gonna warn those of you, or, or alert those of you that want to video, uh, that are videoing, that you may wanna catch this next part on your, your cameras, because my, my graduates know that I'm, I'm likely to ask them to do almost anything at any time. And I'm gonna ask you all to stand up. All of the graduates, please stand. I want you to turn and salute the faculty and staff that has worked to prepare you over the course of the last few years. And I can tell, I could tell from the, the, the level of emotion when I walked into the room that there are parents and friends that have come here to celebrate with you. I want you to turn to them and celebrate them.
And, and because, because you know what tomorrow is, I want you to pick your spot in the audience and wish them a happy Mother's Day. Now I want you, I want you to just think briefly over the last few years. Think of all that you've been through. And I want you to go ahead and let it out now. Celebrate yourselves. Congratulations on your accomplishment. I, I have to wear them out a little bit before I turn them loose on. <laughs> Please be seated. Thank you so much. Distinguished platform guests, uh, staff, faculty, Again, we are, we are gathered here today for, it's a solemn occasion, but I think it not inappropriate to celebrate the human element of this and the excitement that comes along with it. I'm going to, in order, bring to the podium now uh, the chairman of the board of trustees for Elizabeth City State University, Bishop Kim Brown, uh, who will extend a welcome from the university. He will be followed by greetings from Ms. Ann Maxwell, member of the University of North Carolina Board of Governors, followed by Mayor Joe Peel, Mayor of Elizabeth City State, Mayor of, Eli Joe, I'm gonna bring you into Viking land. Mayor of Elizabeth City, North Carolina. And finally, Ms. Ajene Willis, President of the the Elizabeth City State University student body. Thank you. To our distinguished guest Congressman Butterfield, Chancellor and First Lady Conway, platform participants, esteemed faculty, family and friends, and especially the Elizabeth City State University class of 2017. Good morning. On behalf of the Board of Trustees, I'm proud to welcome you to historic River City and the hallowed grounds of Hugh Kale's dream. 126 years ago, the courage and conviction of Representative Kale birthed an institution of academic preparation that is still leaving a mark that will never be erased. Today, the class of 2017 picks up the pen, and they continue to write and live the legacy and record her story. To the class of 2017, as my friend Dr. Jasmine Skurlock reminds us, we should plan in decades, think in years, work in months, live in days, and celebrate in moments. Today is your moment, celebrated by reflecting and remembering. Reflect on the years of matriculation that you have been blessed to participate, but remember to give back to the institution that has poured its heart into your destiny, preparing you for the future. Finally, I remind each of us today that life has three C's. Choices, chances, and changes. You must make a choice to take a chance or life will never change. I'm proud to welcome you today and celebrate this tremendous accomplishment of academic preparation. And it is my pleasure to lead you in declaring our great statement of our conscience. Viking pride. Viking pride. Viking Pride. Good morning. It's my great pleasure to bring greetings on behalf of the University of North Carolina Board of Governors, the UNC President Margaret Spellings, to our distinguished faculty, staff, and alumni of this great university, to the Board of Trustees, Chancellor Conway, Congressman Butterfield, and members of the platform party, but most of all, to the proud graduates and their families, welcome and big congratulations. 
Graduates, this is Chancellor Conway's first commencement ceremony since being officially installed as the leader of Elizabeth, State, Elizabeth City State University. So I hope you're ready to celebrate in style. You are all setting the tone for what will be the first of many proud days in Chancellor's long tenure here at Elizabeth City. It has been my true pleasure and privilege to work with and to get to know Chancellor Conway. Elizabeth City is very fortunate to have such a wonderful and dedicated leader. Thank you. <laughs> Graduates, today we're here to celebrate your accomplishments, to honor the devotion of the many friends and family who have carried you to this day. And we look ahead to the challenges and opportunities that await. You've earned a moment to reflect and bask in the achievement of a college diploma, diploma, and I hope you will relish that. But I also hope you know that we are counting on you in a big way. We're looking to you for energy and leadership to tackle the biggest problems we face, to meet the world head on and leave it in a better place and better shape than you found it. That's what your time here at Elizabeth City State University has prepared you for. And we're behind you all the way. Whatever comes next in your future, remember that you always have a home here. People who are committed to your success. The Vikings are a tight-knit bunch, so don't be a stranger in the years to come. You're always welcome back. Congratulations. Good morning. Good morning. Platform guests, faculty, graduates, and guests. It's a pleasure and honor for me to be here to represent our city council and be a part of this 164th commencement program. As has already been stated, Chancellor Conway had you uh, stand up and celebrate the folks uh, that you have here in the audience that have supported you graduates. One of the things that I would ask that you do as well is, as one of my friends uh, always tells me, there's nothing like a hug. So when this is over, this is a major accomplishment in your lives. And you didn't get here without the help and support of a lot of folks. And so when this is over, don't just wave to them, grab them and give them a big hug and say thank you. And remember, as you move forward, I'm always reminded at times like this of one of my favorite philosophers, Dr. Seuss, wrote a book called, Oh, the Places Will Go. You have your life before you. This is an accomplishment that not many people are able to obtain. So you need to make sure that you take advantage of your hard work as you move forward. You're just beginning. Doors will open and you need to be ready to take and grab those opportunities as they present themselves. The guests that are here, I'd like to welcome you to Elizabeth City. Uh, we're glad to have you, and we hope that you have a good time in our town. Graduates, on behalf of City Council and our citizens, we wish you Godspeed, and don't forget us. Please come back often. Greetings to Chancellor and First Lady Conway, to our distinguished Board of Trustees, to our esteemed faculty and our very diligent staff, to the visionary Congressman G.K. Butterfield, to our supportive alumni, family, and friends, and more importantly, greetings to the crusading class of 2017.
So a few weeks ago, I began to ponder about whether this is a beginning or whether this is an end. And I was led to think of the story of Moses. You see, in the book of Exodus, the Pharaoh had oppressed the Israelites because he feared that they would become too powerful. In order to suppress them, they were made to feel like it was something more that they needed in order to break out of the chains of oppression. They thought that they lacked something, but all they truly lacked was the knowledge that they were not being oppressed because they were inadequate. They were being oppressed because they possessed the ability to do all things divine. Through the trials and tribulations, Moses learned to obey God through the things that he suffered. And just as Moses had, class of 2017, during our tenure, we have learned to obey God through our social, spiritual, academic, and financial trials. But just as God had led Moses to the Pharaoh to demand him to let his children go, to let them be free from oppression, with today's accomplishment, graduates, he has blessed us with the knowledge that will equip us to deliver our people from the issues that plague them. Just as God gave Moses a staff to part the sea today, friends, he has given us the key of knowledge. He knew that our grandparents would fight to get their two feet on the ground so that our parents could begin to put one foot in front of the other so that we could arrive at the door, dig deep in our pockets, pull out the key of knowledge and unlock the chains around our mind and open the door and get our people to the other side. The key that you now possess is a master key. Graduates, turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, I have the master key. And it opens all doors. Yes, folks, it opens the doors of opportunity. You see, I answered my own question. It was revealed to me that this is both a beginning and the end. This is the end of us sitting down and not knowing who we are, whose we are, and what we are capable of. This is the commencement of scholars who are the gladiators, who are setting out to get our people to the other side. So to the prison systems today with this class, you can't have our men in this audience. To the hospitals, to the morgues, you can't have us, you can't have our bodies due to senseless violence. <laughs> to the music videos and to the reality TV shows that attempt to over-sexualize our women, you can't have the bodies of these scholars in this audience. system today, you don't win. And to all of the oppressive systems in the world today with this commencement, you have not overcome us. In fact, we have triumphed over you. In fact, I am here today to declare that the class of 2017 is coming to dismount these oppressive systems. We're coming to destroy all the things that plague our people in this world. We have come to get our people to the other side. So I leave each of you with this, that somewhere out there is a young man or a young woman that looks exactly like us. And the world has told this child that they are not capable. They have told them that they should not, will not, and that they cannot. But I dare you to love them like you've never felt pain before. I dare you to invest in them everything you can give them. And when you have no more, I dare you to find more. I dare you to believe in them. I dare you to give them everything that God has commanded you to give them. I dare you to stand and be righteous in the face of darkness. I dare you to reach down in your pocket, pull out that key. I dare you to open that door and I dare you to get them to the other side. I'm Ajene Willis. Guys, it has been such an honor and a pleasure to serve you guys. As a student body president, I will see each of you on the other side. I turned to, uh, I turned to Governor Maxwell during the, that, that uh, 
presentation and said, that's why this is the job I want. I, I was tempted, though, uh, Reverend Maxwell and, and, and Bishop Brown to get up here and say, and the ushers will now pass among you. <laughs> thank you, Ajane. And, and thank you to each of the, the welcomers that has, has presented to this audience. We will now be favored with the selection Victory Tide by the University Choir under the direction of Dr. Walter Smart. There's a star in the world, new dreams and new visions, the hope of the future to come, brush the past away, and the free men of earth are shaping the future, and this is the song to greet the coming today to introduce you to Elizabeth City State University's 164th commencement ceremony keynote speaker, Congressman G.K. Butterfield. I would add a friend to Elizabeth City State University. Congressman G.K. Butterfield is a lifelong resident of Eastern North Carolina. Raised in Wilson, North Carolina, Congressman Butterfield spent his formative years attending Charles H. Darden High School and worked in the civil rights movement uh, in his young adult, during his young adulthood. His parents were Dr. and Mrs. G.K. Butterfield Sr. His father practiced dentistry for 50 years and served as one of North Carolina's first black elected officials since Reconstruction. His mother was a classroom teacher for over 48 years. <clears throat> Congressman Butterfield graduated from, college, from the College of Law at North Carolina, got his undergraduate and graduate degree, his law degree from North Carolina Central in Durham, North Carolina. After after earning the law degree, Congressman Butterfield entered the law practice in Wilson and served the community in, in that capacity for 13 years. He is best known for his successful litigation of voting rights uh, cases that resulted in the election of African American elected officials throughout Eastern North Carolina. In 1988, Congressman Butterfield was elected as resident superior court judge. In this role, he presided over civil and criminal court, court cases in 46 counties in North Carolina. For, for two years, he served on the North Carolina Supreme Court by appointment of the, of the governor. 
Congressman Butterfield retired from the judiciary after 15 years of service and successfully ran for congressman. He was elected to serve the first district of North Carolina in the U.S. House of Representatives and in a special election on July 20th, 2004, where he, now he continues to serve to this day. In Congress, Congressman Butterfield is a champion of affordable health care, education, improvements in rural communities, veterans affairs, renewable energies, and federal programs that support low-income and middle-class Americans. Butterfield has served in the Democratic leadership as Chief Deputy Whip and is the immediate past chair of the Congressional Black Caucus. He sits on the influential Committee on Energy and Commerce and as the, is the fourth most senior Democrat on the Health Subcommittee. In addition, he serves as a member of subcommittees on communications and communications and technology and energy. Congressman Butterfield is a lifelong member of Jackson Chapel Missionary Baptist Church. He is a veteran of the U.S. Army and a proud father and grandfather. Ladies and gentlemen, please help me welcome to the podium Congressman G.K. Butterfield. Thank you, Chancellor. To the Chancellor of this great university, my friend Thomas E. H. Conway, Jr., uh, thank you for the invitation and thank you for those very kind and generous words of introduction. And to Bishop Kim Brown, who serves as the chair, uh, the Elizabeth City State University Board of Trustees, and to the other trustees who are here assembled, who give up their time and resources to support this great institution. To the Honorable Ann Maxwell, with whom I'm sitting here on the dais, uh, who is here today representing the UNC system on behalf of Lou Biscuit, who is the chair of the uh, UNC Board of Governors, and Margaret Spellings, who is the president of the UNC uh, system. I want uh, Ann to take a good report back to Chapel Hill when she returns. I want her to tell them that Elizabeth, State, Elizabeth City State University is alive and well and needs to be preserved. <laughs> to the administrators and to the faculty members and the staff who all together work together to drive this great institution every day. To the mayor of this great city, my good friend, Mayor Peel, and to my other good friend, Mayor Fred Yates from down the road in Windfall, North Carolina, and to the other elected officials in the audience, and I see quite a few. But most of all today, to the families, to the families I see you and to the honor graduates and to the graduates of this great class, ladies and gentlemen. And let me also mention a name that I, I omitted a moment ago to the student body president, Ajene Willis. She, she has represented you well. I am grateful today for the opportunity to share this significant day in your life, this significant day in the life of this great institution. There is no greater honor than to be a commencement speaker. And I've had this honor many times over the years, but this is uh, a special honor for me today to come to this institution on this day. When the honor comes from an institution that has the rich history and the legacy the legacy of Elizabeth City State University, it's a great honor. Now I realize that we've gathered here today to honor these beautiful graduates. However, there are other heroes and sheroes here today who should be recognized and with whom the graduates share their success. And I refer, of course, to the parents who possess the brains that you were lucky enough to inherit and secondly, they probably provided at least some of the money that you needed to sustain yourselves while you were here. I congratulate the parents 
and the grandparents and the extended families of these graduates. As the immediate past chair of the Congressional Black Caucus, and the Chancellor mentioned that a moment ago, I bring greetings to you and best wishes from our 49 members. The Congressional Black Caucus is fighting every day to strengthen, to strengthen, to strengthen historically by colleges and universities all across this land, all 105 of them, to make college affordable and accessible for the next generation of leaders. Continue to pray for us in our work as we fight the headwinds in Washington that you see play out every day. This is a wonderful occasion. I'm delighted to be with you. Just, just look at you. I've been sitting here for the last 25 or 30 minutes just looking at these graduates. Just the other day, some of you were in elementary school. You remember that? Just the other day, you were in elementary school unsure of your future. Now you are a college graduate. And I know, and I know, and you know that some of you defied the odds. God bless you because you are here and you're graduating today. And I am thrilled, I am absolutely thrilled for your families who sit here today just beaming with pride and with joy. I recall as a student, one of my greatest joys was to make my parents proud of me. Graduates, you make your parents and your grandparents and your families proud of you. This morning in the hotel that I stayed last night, I saw the families that stayed there last night and and they didn't know who I was, but I was watching them, and they were up early this morning. They were getting dressed. They were making sure that the other family members down the hall who were in other rooms, making sure that they were up and ready to come out here today and to celebrate this great day in your life. And whether you know it or not, graduates, they've had some sleepless nights. They've had some uncertain days, but they had faith in you. They had faith in Almighty God that you would succeed and complete your education, and you have. And the fact that this is Mother's Day weekend, how special does that get? This is Mother's Day weekend, and this graduation imparts an even greater importance because you have mothers and you have grandmothers and you have aunties and you have cousins and even big moms who stayed in your case and demanded that you make the family proud, and you have. Congratulations. Now, let's get serious for a minute. I got that behind me. I just want you to celebrate the, your relationship with your family, but let's talk about something else. I want to talk with you for a few minutes, and it will be only a few minutes. Graduation speeches are not uh, usually long, usually 15 minutes is the limit, and, and I'll, I'll be obedient. But I want to talk to you on the subject of being faithful. Faithful. Faithful is defined as being true and constant in affection or allegiance to a person or to an idea or an institution. I want you to be faithful first to your faith. Many of you, no doubt, embrace various faiths, but regardless of your faith, you must practice your faith in all that you do. Put God first. God has been blessing you. God has been blessing each one of you, has been blessing your community, has been blessing your family for a long time. Don't lose sight on your faith. Number two, sounds like you're in a classroom, right? Number two, look at the teachers back there laughing. Be faithful to your family. If you haven't figured it out, and most of you have, your family must be the center of your life. You would not be sitting in those seats were it not for your family and their sacrifice. Your families have been your rock. 
They have your best interests at heart, and guess what? Sometimes they did stuff for you that you don't even know about. They cleaned up your stuff, right, parents? They didn't even know it sometimes. They paid that bill. They did stuff. They cleaned up your stuff and didn't even tell you about it. Why? Because they wanted you to stay focused. They wanted you to stay focused on this day. Be faithful to your family. Be faithful to humanity. Elizabeth City State University is about serving humanity. You must understand that there are more than seven billion peoples in the world. 40% of them live on less than $2 per day. That's a fact. 25,000 children under the age of five die each day from malnutrition and disease. You gotta serve humanity. In this country, 50, nearly 50 million people live in poverty. One out of three children, black, white, and brown, lives below the poverty line. In this country, some people continue to judge other people by their race or their religion or their sexual orientation. You cannot ignore these issues. You cannot ignore humanity. I challenge you, therefore, to be faithful to others, regardless of their circumstance. They need your attention. Be faithful to your university. Viking Pride, be faithful to this university. You must understand the rich history of Elizabeth City State University. I know you've heard it over and over. It's in your program today, but have you really stopped to think about the thousands of men and women who have walked across this stage after receiving a higher education? Men and women who went into the world and made a difference. Without Elizabeth City State University, many of them would never have had the privilege of an education. This university has a rich, rich history. And you cannot talk about the history of Elizabeth City State University without going all the way back to 1865, the year slavery came to an end. You might say, well, my professor said slavery ended in 1863. Well, it depends on your point of view. That was the Emancipation Proclamation. But the 13th Amendment legally ended slavery in America, December of 1865. And that's when Reconstruction began. There were four million slaves in the South, 330,000 slaves in North Carolina, 100,000 slaves within 75 miles of Elizabeth City. And those slaves had nothing. They had nothing but faith in God, faith in family, and a faith that their children would one day succeed and be punk, become productive citizens. And African Americans became registered voters. And they started electing African Americans to the North Carolina General Assembly. And finally, a man named Hugh Kale became the state representative, the state representative for Pasquotank County. He served four terms, and during his last term, Kale was a staunch advocate for higher education, and he insisted, he insisted that a teaching school, a normal school it was called, be established in northeastern North Carolina. And so he used his position in the General Assembly to pass a bill and gave birth to this institution in 1891. And so, even though there have been numerous 126 years, y'all, that's a long time. And even though there have been numerous attempts to close this school or to merge your alma mater, it has withstood the test of time. And now you're 126 years old and you've got to make sure that this institution continues to thrive. Be faithful to this university. And finally, be faithful to yourself. 
Be faithful to yourself. I see the brother down there got a hat on that said, be proud. I could read it on top. Uh, be proud. Be faithful to yourself. Education without character is a dangerous combination. Whoa, let me repeat that again. Education, grandma likes this. It ain't enough to have education, but education without character is very dangerous. I charge you to be trustworthy. When other people trust you, they give you leeway because they, they, don't, they know you don't need monitoring to assure that your obligations are met. When people trust you, graduates, they believe in you, they respect you. If you are to be trusted, you must refrain from even small untruths or self-serving behavior that can destroy a relationship. Remember to always be honest and trustworthy in all of your relationships. People know when you're being fair with them. Oh, they know it. And they can quickly figure out when you are not telling the whole truth. I'm almost finished. I want you to have integrity. Integrity, a person with integrity acts according to his beliefs or her beliefs and training, not according to expediency. A person with integrity is consistent. There's no difference in the way he or she makes decisions from situation to situation. Principles don't vary, whether you're at work or whether you're at home, whether you're in public or alone. The person of integrity takes time for self-reflection. She stays in control, he stays in control. People without integrity, it's what grandma used to call a hypocrite have integrity. Graduates, be reliable. When you make promises to other people on which they rely, you undertake a moral duty. When you make a promise, you are expected to fulfill your promise. And so I charge you to be respectful. People are not things. Everyone has a right to be treated with dignity. We certainly have no duty to hold all people in high esteem, but we should treat everyone, regardless of who they are, and regardless of what they have done, with some degree of respect. We have the responsibility to be the best we can be in all situations. Be responsible. Life is full of choices. Being responsible means being in charge of your choices. It means being accountable for what you do and who you are. It means recognizing that what you do every day, your actions matter. Be responsible. Possess good character. This is the last one. Possess good character. If you choose a path of good character, you will succeed even if you have some bumps along the way. People will help you. They will help you. I served as a judge for 15 years. I know what I'm talking about. Even when you face difficulty, if you have good character, people will help you along the way. And guess what? If you don't have good character, they will run from you as fast as they can. And so graduates, I have come today and I have said what I have intended to say. It is now in your hands. And I will leave you with this very simple thought. A basketball, Brother Chancellor, in my hands is worth about $30. A basketball in LeBron James's hands is worth about $30 million. You see, it depends on whose hands it's in. Right, Coach? Right, Coach? A golf club in my hands is worth about $60. A golf club in the hands of Tiger Woods is worth about $60 million and a grand slam of tournaments. It depends on whose hands it's in. A, a tennis racket, a tennis racket is useless in my hands. <laughs> a tennis racket in Venus Williams' hands is a Wimbledon championship. It depends on whose hands it's in. A rod. A rod, I wish I had a stick up here. A rod in my hands will keep away a wild animal. A rod in Moses' hand will part the mighty sea. It depends on whose hands it's in. 
two fish, five loaves of bread in my hands. Preacher, Bishop, two fish and five loaves of bread in my hands is a fish sandwich. <laughs> Two fish and five loaves of bread in God's hands will feed thousands. It depends on whose hands it's in. Nails, nails in my hand are just a bad wound. Nails in the hands of Jesus will produce salvation for the entire world. It depends on whose hands it's in. Graduates, put your concerns, your worries, your fears, your hopes, your dreams, your families, your relationships in God's hands because it depends on whose hands it's in. Congratulations, a job well done. I want to Congressman Butterfield Let me I, I think you're going to hear that sermon again Congressman Butterfield Let me <laughs> On behalf of the Viking family I want to present you with a token of our appreciation and, and a remembrance of today because as when, when we have special events, we want to celebrate with the special people. Let's give them a great Viking Pride! Viking Pride! Viking Pride! Graduates, we know that this is your day, but we're also here to celebrate and recognize the people who have helped carry you to the finish line. The faculty and staff of Elizabeth City State are the heart and soul of this institution. And it is my privilege to honor them by presenting this year's Board of Governors Award for Excellence in Teaching. This award was first established in 1994 to underscore the value of teaching and to reward great instructors across the university system. The awards are given annually to a tenured faculty member from each of our 17 universities. After nomination by his peers and careful review by the Board of Governors, it is my pleasure to present this year's award to Dr. Glenn Bowman, Jr. <laughs> Dr. Bowman, would you come forward? <laughs> Chancellor Conway. Professor of History, Dr. Bowman joined Elizabeth, State, Elizabeth City State University in 1999 and began teaching courses in method, research methods, European history, and world history. He has also served as the director of international programs and as department chair of the Department of History and Political Science. Professor Bowman recognizes that there are complex and interconnected world demands as a global perspective. We need citizens who can work, write, and communicate across cultures, disciplined thinkers with the potential to lead in the workplace, to lead in the classroom, to lead in the community. He emphasizes critical thinking 
and clear, crisp writing in his courses. And that's very important and necessary in today's world. But that means he's probably editing my speech right now. <laughs> Dr. Bowman wants students to question what they hear, even what they hear if it's from him. Anybody experience that in his class? He's known to stop class and demand evidence before letting a discussion proceed. As he likes to say, if you don't do your own thinking, someone else will do it for you. After writing The Razor's Edge, a textbook that addresses a few tiny issues in world history, such as what is goodness, that's tiny, or how will the world end? Wow. Dr. Bowman donated the royalties to honor Leonard Ballou, a longtime university archivist. Money from the Ballou Fund have helped, monies from the Ballou Fund have helped sponsor student research and train history throughout the region. Dr. Bowman was also instrumental in preparing a history of Elizabeth City State University in celebration of Founders Day 2016, your institution's 125th anniversary. He discovered documents that were previously overlooked, including the untold story about a 1903 vote by the State Board of Education that nearly ended Elizabeth City State. That story, along with many other tales of Elizabeth City's resilience through the years, can be found in Dr. Bowman's recent book on university history. He continues to celebrate this institution in a column for the Daily Advance, highlighting his commitment to educating not just his students, but the public at large. Dr. Bowman, for your devotion to Elizabeth City State University, to its students and its proud place in North Carolina history. We honor you with the 2017 Board of Governors Award for Excellence in Teaching. In celebrating Dr. Bowman, we also give thanks to the more than 14,000 dedicated faculty who teach throughout the University of North Carolina. Dr. Bowman. This is your award. Let's see if we can get it up in the top. And this is for you to enjoy. And thank you for all you do. Thank you. Congratulations, Dr. Bowman. Of Americans. I'm going to ask Colonel Gaelic to come to the podium to uh, do the oath of, of induction for our second lieutenants that have chosen to go into service to their country in this, in this uh, institution, through this institution's ROTC program. Colonel Gaelic. Thank you, Chancellor Conway, Honorable Congressman Butterfield, Honorable Mayor Peel, Honorable Ms. Ann Maxwell, Distinguished Board of Trustees, Distinguished Faculty, Outstanding Viking Alumni. Did you know this month, besides being National Barbecue Month, is also <laughs> National Military Appreciation Month? Congress that is designated May as National Military Appreciation Month in 1999 to ensure the nation was given the opportunity to public dig publicly demonstrate their appreciation for the 1% of our nation that volunteered and still volunteered today to support and defend our way of life. A month to appreciate their sacrifices and successes, both past members and presently serving members of our armed forces. Will the veterans in attendance Please stand, or if possible, raise your hand so that we can thank you for your service. The Army, Navy, Marine Corps, Air Force, Coast Guard.
As you notice, some of them are in uniform, some are not in uniform, they're just in a different uniform now. You do your service to your country and you continue your service. You had several faculty out here that have served their country and now serve, and you, the customer, soon to be graduates of ECSU. And as I learned from Howard and Hampton, those HUs, we are known as the ECSU. Okay. Today is a special and memorable occasion for Second Lieutenant Ryan Ferguson, Second Lieutenant Courtney Hicks, <laughs> Ryan is from Elizabeth City, the Elizabeth City. They're about to join the Distinguished 1%, that group that I mentioned earlier and that the Chancellor mentioned as well. That group that includes Congressman Butterfield. To enter into the officer corps, they took an oath. This oath is not comprised of mere ceremonial words. The oath embodies what they strive to uphold throughout their military career and afterwards into civilian ranks. These soon-to-be Viking graduates will be officials for our government and ambassadors for our nation and our states. They are obligated both morally and physically to do their utmost to uphold and defend our way of life. So that you know what they've committed themselves to they will restate their oath for you. Raise your right hand, repeat after me. I state your name. I, Ryan Ferguson. Do you solemnly swear? Do solemnly swear. That I support and defend? Yes, support and defend. The Constitution of the United States? The Constitution of the United States. Against all enemies? Against all enemies. Foreign and domestic? Foreign and domestic. That I bear true faith? That I bear true faith. And allegiance to the same? And allegiance to the same. That I take this obligation freely? Without any, mental reservation without any mental reservation or purpose of evasion, or purpose of evasion. And, that I will well and that I will dwell and faithfully, and faithfully. discharge the duties of the office, the of office on which I am about to enter, which I'm about to enter. So, help me God. so help me God about face All right, ladies and gentlemen, our newest officers from Elizabeth City State University. Viking loud, Viking proud. Yeah. Chancellor Conway, we now recommend candidates for graduate degrees. <laughs> Chancellor Conway, it is my privilege to report to report to you that the candidates here assembled have qualified in all aspects for the degrees by successfully completing the curricula offered in the graduate programs in the school, in school administration, science and biology at Elizabeth City State University. Would the candidates for the Masters of School Administration and the Masters of Science in Biology please stand? Chancellor Conway, it is with pleasure that I present to you these candidates who have completed all of the requirements for graduation. They've been certified by the registrar and have received an affirmative vote by the faculty to be awarded the respective master's degrees in school administration, science and biology, mathematics, and elementary education. And I recommend to you for conferral of their degrees. By virtue of the authority vested in me,
by the University of North Carolina Board of Governors and the Elizabeth City State University Board of Trustees, I do hereby confer upon you the degree for which you have qualified with all of the honors, privileges, responsibilities appertaining, thereunto appertaining. Will the candidates for Masters of School Administration, Masters of Science in Biology, Masters of Elementary Ed, and Masters of Mathematics please proceed to the platform to receive your diplomas. Malcolm Eatman. Jennifer James. Ashley Wenslow. Bernard Baysmore. James Hedden. Kenya Robinson. Leah Twine. <laughs> Congratulations, P please be seated. Baccalaureate degrees will now be conferred. Chancellor Conway, it is my privilege to report to you that the candidates here assembled have qualified in all respects for their degrees by successfully completing curricula offered by the academic departments at Elizabeth City State University. They have been recommended by the departmental chairs, approved by Honors Council where appropriate, certified by the registrar, and have received an affirmative vote of the faculty to be awarded the degrees, the Bachelor of Science in Mathematics, the Bachelor of Science in Education, the Bachelor of Science and the Bachelor of Arts, and the Bachelor of Social Work. At this time, I am pleased to begin the conferment of undergraduate degrees by presenting the bearer of the mace. Chancellor Conway, it is my pleasure, most distinct indeed, to inform you that the official bearer of the mace is Ms. Anissa Marlena Lynch from Hollister, North Carolina. She has the highest non-transfer GPA of 3.91. Will Ms. Elisa Lynch please come forward for the conferment of your diploma? <laughs> Chancellor Conway. I'm pleased to present 
the bearer of the mace. Bearer of the mace, Anicia Lynch, by virtue of the authority vested in me by the University of North Carolina Board of Governors and the Elizabeth City State University Board of Trustees, I do hereby confer upon you the degree for which you have qualified with all the honors, privileges, and responsibilities thereto appertaining. Anicia, congratulations. <laughs> Chancellor Conway. Before we proceed with the conferral of degrees, I'm honored to have the opportunity to recognize those seniors who are graduating with highest honors, summa cum laude, having achieved by their diligence a cumulative GPA of 3.8 to a 4.0. Those students with those GPAs, would I ask you, I'll ask you now to stand. Let's give them a big hand. You may be seated. Magnum cum laude with a grade point average of 3.6 to 3.79. Would you please stand? You may be seated. And seniors graduating cum laude with a grade point average of 3.25 to 3.59. Would you stand? You may be seated. Now I wish to recognize seniors who have completed four years in the university's honors program, many of whom have just stood for other honors. Please stand so that we may now congratulate you if you're in the honors program. You may be seated. I am pleased to acknowledge all of the summa cum laude, magna cum laude, and uh, <coughs> cum laude graduates and the graduates of the University Honors Program. To the Honors Program graduates especially, I would like to commend you on having, having, uh, I apologize, on having achieved the excellence required by a highly demanding and even more rigorous curriculum. I salute all of you for your diligence and perseverance and encourage you to continue to excel. Thank you. Please be seated. Okay. Give them a round of applause. <laughs> Chancellor Conway, now is the time that I think we've all been waiting for. I'm pleased now to present the candidates for their respective diplomas. Chancellor Conway, on the recommendation of the department chairs, certified by the university registrar, and by the affirmative vote of the faculty, it is my pleasure to present the candidates for the Bachelor of Science in Mathematics, the Bachelor of Science in Education, the Bachelor of Science, the Bachelor of Arts, 
and the Bachelor of Social Work. Would you all please stand? By, by virtue of the authority vested in me by the University of North Carolina Board of Governors and the Elizabeth City State University Board of Trustees, I do hereby confer upon you the degree for which you have qualified with all the honors, privileges, and responsibilities thereunto appertaining. Chancellor Conway, I'm pleased to present to you the candidates for the Bachelor of Science in Mathematics. Candidates for the Bachelor of Science in Education, Bachelor of Science, Bachelor of Arts, and Bachelor of Social Work. Now, candidates for the Bachelor of Science in Mathematics, would you please come forward to receive your diplomas? Will the candidates for the Bachelor of Science in Education please stand? I'm pleased to present the candidates for the Bachelor of Science in Education. Would you please come forward to receive your diplomas? Crystal Brooks. Michelle Dewees. Christina Elliott. Katayla Evans. Takia Green. Elizabeth Gutierrez. LaShonda Harrison. <laughs> Brittany Jones. Shaquilla. Shaquilla Jones. <laughs> Amy Payne. <laughs> Shamika Horta. Jasmine Ryan. Perry Sanders. Nicole Skagerberg. Simone Skinner. Desiree Smith. Kelsey White, Mariah Wooten, Congratulations, please be seated. Will the 
the candidates for the Bachelor of Science degree please stand. <laughs> Chancellor Conway, I'm pleased to present the candidates for the Bachelor of Science degree. Please come forward to receive your diploma. Deandra Alexander. Demetria Baines. Lenisha Banks. Ramon Battle. Dara Beeman. Maya Bell. Gage Blocker. Danielle Boatwright. Tiana Bow. Denisha Bowser. Catherine Bradley. Khadijah Bryant. Casey Cartwright. Ashley Cartwright Caldwell. Malcolm Cherry. Miltonia Cherry. Marissa Cifuentes. Shaquasia Cooper. Deshaun Cowan. Michael Cumberland. Shaquisha Daniels. William DeFeo. William Edwards. Paige Ehler. Terrence Fennell Jr. Kamaria Flowers. Nicole Franklin. Tashiana Gallup. Damian Gatling. Farron Gill. Rashad Graham. Devante Griffin. Antonio Guyon. Kendall Halsey. Emmanuel Hart. Brandy Herard. Courtney Hicks. Deshaun Holly. 
Joshua Hollowell. Candace House. Antonio Huff. Shelby Infinger. Naima James. Charlene Jones. Darian Jones. Daquan Jones. Ansley Lassiter. Kendall Leary. Stephanie Lightfoot. Dakeem Lumsden. Christopher Lynch. Nakira Lyons. Tahaya Manning. Tatiana Matthews. Joshua McCoy. Maria. Maria. Mullen, Parcel Murphy Jr., Kayla Norfleet, Daniel Odell, Briante Parati. Cameron Perry. Dwayne Ponton. Natifa Powell. Nigel Pugh. Shantasia Pugh. Dwight Ramsey. Alexander Reams. Nakia Regist. <laughs> Melissa Reed. <laughs> Alicia Reynolds. Jamika. Jamika Richardson. <laughs> Nathaniel Richardson. Jefferson Ridgeway the fourth. Shia? Shia Riddick. Kiana Rivers. Jeffrey Robinson. Derek Roebuck. 
Khadija Rogers. Eduardo Santos. Kalik Satchel. Khadija Skinner. Willie Smallwood Jr. Khadija Smith. Janae Spruel. Sharnetta Sutton. Victor Tabs. Jacqueline Tan. Trey Taylor. Jordan Thomas. Mallory Thomas. Jonathan Vaughn. Destiny Ward. Abigail Weeks. Monique Whidbey. Takira Whitaker. Sonia Whitehurst. Tori Wilbon. Leonza Williams. Rashida Williams. Stephen Williams. Dean Wise. Darius Witherspoon. Shanice Young. Congratulations. Please be seated. Will the candidates for Bachelor of Arts degree please stand? <laughs> Chancellor Conway, I'm pleased to present candidates for the Bachelor of Arts degree. Please come forward to receive your diploma.
Ann Bell. Mattison Bond. Jovany Brinkley.
Congratulations, please be seated. Will the candidates for Bachelor of Social Work please stand? <laughs> Chancellor Conway, I'm pleased to present the candidates for the Bachelor of Social Work degree. Please come forward to receive your diploma. Please be seated. Chancellor Conway, this concludes the conferral of degrees for the candidates comprising the spring graduating class of 2017. Now, now would all of the candidates for baccalaureate degrees please stand. Please symbolize the attainment of your diploma by turning your tassels from the right to the left. Congratulations. Please be seated. To the spring 2017 graduates, I congratulate you on the attainment of this milestone in your careers. At this time, I would like to recognize our honor marshals. Honor marshals are the highest ranking students academically from the freshman, sophomore, and junior classes. The students were invited to participate today as honor marshals. Will the honor marshals please stand and be recognized? Thank you. Be seated.
Also at this time, I would like to recognize and thank the ECSU Commencement Committee and by applause the ECSU Symphon and to applaud the ECSU Symphonic Wind Ensemble under the direction of Professor Juliet Borkins and the ECSU Choir under the direction of Dr. Walter Swan. Thank you for helping make this a memorable occasion. <clears throat> At this time, I welcome to the podium Ms. Bethany Ely, president of the senior class to deliver the farewell remarks. Good morning. First and foremost to my graduating class of 2017, Chancellor Conway, platform participants, faculty, staff, friends, and family. My name is Bethany Ely, and I served as the 2016-17 senior class president. First, I would like to congratulate my fellow classmates and thank you all for allowing me to serve as your senior class president. There is a saying that has meant a lot to me, and it is a saying I believe applies to all of us and is important as we look forward to our future. The saying goes something like this. The answer is never no. It is either yes, not yet, or there is something better in store for us. You may have not received the job you wanted. Your test scores may have too, been too low to get accepted to the grad school of your dreams. Or to be quite honest, Elizabeth City State University may have not been your first choice institution. As I've learned through talking to some of you all over the past four years, for me personally, this school was not even an option, just somewhere I met the requirements. But from my very first day on June 22nd, 2013, as a model scholar, I realized this was my quote unquote, something better. It may not have been where I wanted to be, but where I needed to be to turn out who I was meant to be. Looking back, out of all nine of the colleges and universities I was accepted to, there is not a different institution I would choose to go back and redo my college career at. Remember, the answer is never no, it's always yes, not yet, or there is something better in store for you. So for now, just sit back, trust the process, follow the journey, believe all the pieces will fall into place, and know everything happens for a reason. Class of 2017, stay positive in everything you do, and know everything and anything that happens to us is what we need to be done to mold us into who we are destined to be. Again, congratulations to the class of 2017, and now, for our first time as official alum of Elizabeth City State University, Viking Pride, Viking Pride, Viking Pride. Thank you. At this time, it's my pleasure to bring to the podium Mr. Abdul Rashid, President of the National Alumni Association, who will administer the oath of allegiance to the university. Good morning protocol having been established, I would like to first uh, also congratulate the newest members of our National Alumni Association and congratulate all the parents that have supported these young people and these new emerging leaders as they embark upon their next step in life. Before I move to the oath of office, or I'm sorry, of allegiance, I would like to thank and welcome our congressman for his great delivery. It's great to see him. I would also like to ask Ms. Arjane Willis to please stand again and for us to absolutely. We absolutely want to encourage you and your leadership and ask you to keep speaking that truth. It is this chancellor 
who taught me that alma mater in some uh, definition or interpreted means mother. Is that right, Chancellor? Dear mother. Dear mother. Well, ECSU has acted as your dear mother for the last four, five, six, <laughs> however many years it took for you to get to this point. ECU, ECSU has guided you. ECSU has instructed you. ECSU has fed you. ECSU has disciplined you. Elizabeth City State University has provided you with unconditional love. And like your mother at home, you should be forever grateful. So please stand and repeat after me. I state your name, solemnly pledge unbroken allegiance to my alma mater in appreciation for the opportunities for development afforded me as a student at Elizabeth City State University. I state your name, pledge active membership in the National Alumni Association wherever I may be. Through association with my fellow alumni, I, sh I shall forever do my best to uphold, to uphold the ideals and traditions of my alma mater. I state your name, pledge as a person to exemplify high ideals by rendering positive and dignified service to the community, to the state, nation, and world, thus living to bring honor and respect to my alma mater. So in closing, no, I'm sorry, you're through. <laughs> Thank you, you may be seated. <laughs> I was going to say in my closing, please leave this place in the spirit of your mother. And please step into our state and our nation and help us be more nurturing and concerned for each other. Help us protect the human rights of all people. Help us discipline ourselves when we need discipline. When we need to be in timeout, put us in timeout. When we need our privileges removed, remove our privileges. When we need our butts whooped, when we deserve that strong medicine, administer it. When we should be locked up from ourselves, when that discipline is appropriate, lock us up. In the spirit of mama, help give unconditional love to all people and our planet. Viking pride, Viking pride, Viking pride. Okay, so this is it. This is the last part. Let me say to our graduates, 
If I could leave, if I could ask you to leave here with a, an idea in mind, I would ask you, or the ideas in mind, because the, the congressman has given you a lot to think on. Your student body president has given you a lot to think on. There's a lot in those charges that you should take seriously. As I have said to you on a couple of other occasions, you are a special class. This is a special class for Elizabeth City State University, and you will carry this with you for the rest of your lives. You are the class that started off over your last few years here at Elizabeth City. You've seen four different chancellors. You've seen an awful lot of change in the institution. But through the efforts of committed faculty and staff, and through your own diligence and persistence, you persevere. Dr. Bowman's book carries a theme about the message that it, the story of Elizabeth City State University being one of excellence and resilience. That's who you are. That's what life has given you as a test. That's what you carry forth from this place. That's what you start from on your commencement day. You know, this has been a great week uh, for Chancellor. I started out this week uh, on Tuesday, I think it was, I had lunch with uh, six alumni, all of whom, the youngest in the group was I think 76 years old. The oldest in the group was 102 years old. These were Vikings that attended this university when the institution was only 24 years old. Now it's 126 years old. That's a legacy of excellence and resilience, or it's part of the legacy of excellence and resilience. If, if I had the time today, what I would do is go through the real story that is behind each and every diploma that we passed out today. This week has been one where, as chancellor, I got to graduate a new set of kindergartners from our, our um, a child care center from kindergarten into the first grade. There was a lot of excitement there. And if you think about from kindergarten to 102, the kind of legacy that, uh, that is part of the Viking story. And now we're here with you. We're talking about graduating another class of Vikings, challenging you to go out and take your place among the Viking family and to uphold the Viking story because the Viking story, our story, is now your story. I had the opportunity this week as I was walking across campus, I, I bumped into some people and I'm just gonna take the privilege of the microphone just to call a few names and I wish I could call everybody's name but I can't. But there were some people, some of, of them, when I met them, they were excited. Some of them, when I met them, they were in pain but we're all here today in celebration. I, I call the name of Melanie Poole. Melanie Poole. Melanie Poole is a study in resistance. Melanie Poole started her Viking journey 14 years ago and said, I will not stop until I get that degree from Elizabeth City State University. You know, like the world is the world is small and it's getting smaller all the time. I, I I call the name of Darius Witherspoon. Darius Witherspoon actually was taught by my son in Warren County, and now I get to hand him a diploma today from Elizabeth City State University. The world is small and getting smaller. I call the name of Michelle Deweese. Michelle DeWeese is the Elizabeth City State University Student Teacher of the Year and going on to the state competition for Student Teacher of the Year. Education is our root school. And we're still turning out excellent teachers. I'd call the name of Ashley Cartwright. Yeah, you talk about maybe this wasn't your first choice. Ashley Cartwright started at Howard University and decided she wanted to be a Viking. And today, Ashley Cartwright graduates from Elizabeth City State University. 
And just because I got to go back home at some point, I got to call the name of Carla Evans, who, who graduated from a school in Lewisburg, North Carolina, in Franklin County, North Carolina, is where I hail from. So Carla, congratulations. To each, to each and every Viking here today, and to each and every Viking family by extension that's here today, I want to say this has been a grand celebration, but as has been stated over and over again, this is a beginning to Congressman Butterfield, to Governor Maxwell. I want to thank you and to say this is how we do it at Elizabeth City State University. And to all of you, and I know uh, Joe Peel knows I'm not going to let him off the stage without saying this. Any time that you all decide to come back to Elizabeth City, situated in the beautiful inner banks of North Carolina, the harbor of hospitality, please come back and see us. Have a great day. Congratulations. Would you please stand for the singing of the alma mater? This been wonderful. It's felt like a church service. The final blessing. May you be blessed in the city and blessed in the field. May you be blessed when you go out and blessed when you come in. May your future careers and jobs be blessed. May your homes be blessed. May your personal style be blessed and the level of your integrity be blessed. May you be blessed when you rise up and blessed when you lay down. May you be blessed with the meditations of your heart and the thoughts of your mind. May your bank accounts be blessed. May your new relationships be blessed. May your old relationships remain blessed. May you be blessed through the journey of your life. And may you journey with God always. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you 
and be gracious to you. May the Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. And for all of this in agreement, we say amen. 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 amen.